All right. Uh, hi, so I'm here to talk to you guys tonight about camouflage. Uh, according to William Gibson, it's the new plaid. Like, everybody's running around wearing it, uh, but none of us are stalking prey or being hunted by our enemies. So I've become interested in why it's, how it's turned out that way. Like, what's the history behind this and why are we all running around in military gear? It's been going on since uh, around the 70s. But as casual dress, um, it was mostly in counterculture circles, people that wanted to look a bit revolutionary that were just rocking military jackets. It wasn't until the late 80s, early 90s that it started popping up kind of the way that we're getting used to seeing it now. Um, and back then it was mostly, let's say, young aspiring artists living in the inner cities of the east coast of the US who spent a lot of time outdoors. Um, and you could say, like, maybe it's for practical reasons. Ex-military clothing is quite rugged, it's relatively cheap, it does well outside in the weather, and it looks tough. By the late 90s, camouflage is, like, very well established in streetwear circles. Mauritius came up, and their message is that they're about uh, pacifist military design. They don't want to be associated with, with the military too much, but they recycle and reappropriate military patterns, and it, at this point it's really a common thing. <laughs> Truth be told though, like, most kids wearing it are, are doing it, they're adopting the gang colors of like the, the toughest military force in the world. You're doing this for the masculine image, and that's really kind of what it's about at that point. If, I mean, if you're gonna be honest with yourself. <laughs> Then in 2001, this guy pops up yelling death to America and things kind of change, like new massive military campaigns start up uh, and militaries become very concerned with the image that they're now projecting in these new wars. I mean, you can't have the guys running around up in the hills wearing the same uniform as you. It's just not a good look. And besides that, when you're sitting in your super cyber computer center in Woodland camouflage, you've got to feel kind of stupid, right? <laughs> this. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but the nature of warfare is changing. Uh, it's all about cyber operations now. It is digital. It's smart weapons. Uh, and the military needs a new kind of recruit. So they embark on new recruitment campaigns. This includes a, a new image, new camouflage. It's pixel camouflage now. We're all very digital, super smart. The uh, thing that's happened, though, is the military became more concerned with how recruits looked in the recruitment videos than they were with the actual functionality of the camouflage. And you end up with this kind of situation, which, yeah, if, if you're going to hide out on your grandmother's couch, this is super good for you. Out in the desert, uh, and not so much. So, yeah, we've ended up in a situation where the military are more concerned with the way they look, with their image, with being fashionable, than they are about uh, like uh, the actual tactical use of this equipment that supposedly is protecting their soldiers. <laughs> Gotta love that Sean photo. <laughs> Let it bask in its glory. Okay, but then in 2013, camouflage goes absolutely nuts. It's on every high fashion runway. Uh, however, none of these fashion designers want to be associated with the military at all. Uh, they say they're inspired by G.I. Joe, by Hurricane Katrina. Um, everyone is, is very adamant in every interview about the fact that it has nothing to do with the military. And meanwhile, I'm becoming worried that all this con camouflage around everywhere, instead of demilitarizing, it's actually unconsciously uh, kind of legitimizing the militarization of everything that's happening meanwhile in society around it. And they're just making these guys and their pants more powerful. Uh, but then I came to Japan earlier this year, and things are very different here. Here you can walk into a store and buy every color of Waffen SS camouflage that was ever made. You cannot do that in Europe. <laughs> People are a lot more relaxed about appropriating patterns here just for the fact that they look cool. Uh, besides that, there's all, you have this there's military cosplay, there's military manga. Uh, there, there seems to be a lot more of an admission that this is all just fantasy. That it's not about being a tough guy, it's just wearing this thing because it looks cool or engaging in these activities because they bring you some kind of pleasure. And I'm really not worried that the people rocking around in camo loafers and camo socks uh, is somehow <laughs> legitimizing the militarization uh, of the police. Uh, the trouble is, though, camo really is the new plaid. 
and plaid is boring. So are there any interesting things that are left to still happen with camouflage? Fortunately, there are stuff like this. Tokyo Camouflage by Haruko Matsubara, which has a story behind it about urban survival, but it's actually more about discovering the unique properties of each area in the city. Uh, so this is a very interesting way to actually engage with your urban environment through camouflage. Or uh, Adam Harvey's CV Dazzle, using first world word dazzle tech painting techniques. Uh, this is to hide from facial recognition algorithms. So essentially what you're doing with this is you're hiding from robots. Uh, at the same time, you're making a very blatant identity statement to everyone around you. You're not hiding from humans at all if you walk around looking like this. A similar project, Simone Tina Kill's Real Flays Glamouflage. This is actually fabric for t-shirts. So when the Facebook algorithm sees you, it sees you and like eight Michael Jacksons. So a, a very interesting identity question as well, where you can like spoof celebrities into the algorithms. Uh, this is my back to the military world. This is my favorite thing happening right now. This is the new Dutch military camouflage. On the left is the Dutch government's Google Maps censorship. On the right is their new military's camouflage. So they have a direct link in the identity of their armed forces between this, the surveillance state, basically, and what they're like, like the pointy end of the stick. Um, so I, I hope you have some things to think about now. Next time you wear camouflage, like, are you doing it to hide or to make some kind of identity statement? And like, what do these patterns mean that you have draped around your body? Uh, don't worry, got all these hands.